Hi, my name is Freek Verbeek. I'm from the Open University of the Netherlands and I'm presenting the paper Deadlock Verification of Cache Coherence Protocols and Communication Fabrics, which has been published at the IEEE Transactions on Computers. This has been joint work with the University of California Irvine, with Poya Yagini, Ashkan Ekbal and Nader Baghersadeh. In this paper, we aim at verification of cache coherence protocols that run in a multi-core architecture. In such an architecture, an advanced interconnect can provide the communication between all the cores. We focus on whether the cache coherence protocols can induce any kind of deadlock, or whether we can prove that no such deadlock exists. So let's consider a very simple example, the MI cache coherence protocol. We have a certain set of nodes that have private L2 caches. And each node can have cache lines that are either in the invalid state or in a modified state where they own the cache block. All these caches communicate with the directory and this directory is, uh, performs the bookkeeping that, and knows which caches are in which state. As an interconnect, we also consider a very simple interconnect, a 2D mesh with XY routing, where messages first go into the X direction and then into the Y direction. Now this interconnect is well known to be deadlock free. There are no circular dependencies and therefore no deadlocks can occur. Now if we combine these two, then we get a fairly complicated system. And the surprising fact is that even though we have a deadlock free protocol and a deadlock free interconnect, if you combine the two, you can still get deadlocks. And we call these surprising deadlocks cross-layer deadlocks. So how do we find these cross-layer deadlocks? Our approach is based on formal methods. And crucial to our approach is that we have invariants that relate the state of the protocol to the state of the interconnect. For example, uh, when everybody is in an invalid state, then there should be no unroot messages. This is an example of a in cross-layer invariant, because it relates the protocol layer to the interconnect layer. I will show one example of such a cross-layer invariant. Here we have an example where we have two state machines uh, communicating with each other through a communication fabric. The communication fabric consists of two queues, Q0 and Q1, and both the processes uh, well, process S sends out requests and waits for acknowledgements, whereas process T uh, waits for requests and then sends out an acknowledgement. The invariant that is found uh, for this example is an equality that on the left hand side states something over the state of the protocol and on the right hand side something on the number of messages that is in the queues. And also here we can see that if both process T and process S are in their initial state, then the left hand side is zero, so the right hand side should be zero as well, indicating that there are no unroot messages. For real examples, these kinds of cross layer invariants very quickly become very complicated. What we have provided in our paper is a methodology for finding these cross layer invariants and using these invariants to find cross layer deadlocks. One of the applications that we have used it for is to find the correct queue sizes that allow deadlock freedom. Our approach can be used to verify a system in which a protocol runs on top of an interconnect and it will allow this to be verified monolithically. The entire approach is fully automated. We have made an Haskell implementation of the invariant generation, the deadlock detection and all the required paraphernalia. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, then don't hesitate to contact me.